Hey guys, welcome to part two of my uh, How I Draw a Lion King illustration. So if you remember in the first video, I'm drawing uh, Jungle Emperor Leo and uh, also known as Kimba the White Lion and some of his uh, friends and companions here. And what I did was, if you saw me uh, draw the, um, sketch out the illustration earlier, well prior to shading it in, I went and uh, copied it and put it into Illustrator and then took the opacity down so I could go over my drawing and ink it. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just inking everything out and you know this is kind of a, a thoughtless process because you don't really have to think about where you know anything goes. You just kind of you're just tracing at this point, tracing what you had already drawn out. So. Um, this is a little bit quicker uh, process, a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. So, filling in the nose, blacking it in, giving him a smile. They're all happy campers in this uh, in this shot here, in this illustration. Big eyes, of course, big you know anime eyes. And uh, if you've ever seen any of the um, documentaries on Osamu Tezuka, you would know that uh, he was a big fan of Walt Disney. So I think he saw Bambi something like 80 times or something like that in the, in the theater. So, you know, I think that that Kimba the White Lion or Jungle Emperor Leo um, is kind of like Osama Tezuka's uh, love letter to Bambi. So if you're not familiar with uh, Kimba the White Lion, um, it started off in a, uh, a shonen uh, man manga uh, magazine back in I believe 1950 and then was turned into a, an anime series in um, 1964, I believe, and then aired in the United States in 1966. So if you remember, you know, kind of what I was explaining in the first video, um, it said that the Lion King movie that came out in 1994 was uh, heavily influenced by Kimba the White Lion. And there's several similarities in, in both of the, the movies. So you should check them both out. I mean, you've probably seen uh, The Lion King, but if you haven't seen Kimba the White Lion or Jungle Emperor Leo, um, you should treat yourself to that. So filling in her smile and her eyes. I'm going to try to you know, make sure that I get her eyelashes kind of lined up correctly so that both eyes you know, um, look similar. So now you know, I'm inking with a, a Copic liner here and once you're in the inking process you have to really be careful not to mess up or you know, not to mess up big because you know, it's not like when you're sketching where you have your eraser and you can kind of go back and clean things up and um, and redraw them but you know once you're you're inking you're kind of committed to whatever ink you put down on the on the paper but you know once you once you go into the uh, the coloring phase of the illustration um, that could be a lot more for forgiving and um, you could fix things at that point or prior to you know if you have like a white uh, like a white gel pen, I use a white gel pen to kind of clean things up a little bit when I'm inking, so just a little tip there. So anything that looks a little crooked that I'm inking right now, I'll probably clean up um, with a white gel pen before I color. I'm getting the bird up top here and if you remember in the first video I told you that I took a, um, some white out and I cleaned out the text um, where the bird's head is so that I could pop the bird's head in front of the text. There we go, 
let's draw those uh, head feathers in. Nice. Okay, so I've got my um, illustration of the characters down. Now I'm gonna start drawing the um, trees and jungle uh, atmosphere in the background. And, you know, like I said in the first video, I never really draw uh, foliage or trees or plant life or anything like that. So, you know, I'm just kind of winging it here. <laughs> just kind of making it up as I go along. Also, I, I never really draw animals, so this is kind of fun. This is fun to draw animals, and I, I feel like animals are a little bit easier to draw than humans. There's a lot less detail that you have to put in. I mean, especially like if you're drawing something that's supposed to look like an animated uh, character. You know, it's, it's a lot looser. So now filling in the pinks, and I've got my Copic markers here kind of my markers of choice and uh, filling in some shadows here in the hair. You know, I like the Copics. They, they really make everything look smooth. Um, they don't leave a lot of streakiness and almost look like, you know, a little bit of a watercolor effect, I feel. But what do I know? I've, I've never painted with watercolors, so. I've uh, I painted with watercolor pencils. But, uh, you know, I can't say I'm very good at that. I haven't done it much. So now I'm filling in his eyes, and I'm going to use three colors of blue to do this. And I want to really give it this, like, uh, like liquid, kind of marbly effect. So I'm blending, it, blending in the three blues together. I really like the way his eyes came out. They really look beautiful, I think. If I may say so myself, I don't know if I'm, can I say that? <laughs> I'll leave that up to you guys. So now I'm filling in the deer's fur here. And unfortunately, you know, I only really have like two brown uh, markers. And this one's like a really, really light brown, almost like a, like a golden brown. And then the other brown I have is, is a dark brown. So I kind of, I kind of wanted to um, color the deer and the lioness two different colors of, of tan. Um, but I only have this one tan marker, so. And I'm using the brown for her, her mane and, uh, and the circles around the deer's eyes, so. I'm kind of limited, you know, as far as what I can do with that. But it's all good. It, it'll come out good anyway. Color, coloring in the ears, some pink on the inside. And see, this is the brown I was talking about. So it's kind of a darker brown. And that's all I have. So this is this is very challenging to do because normally, you know, if I wasn't filming this, um, I would be flipping the paper around so I could get all these angles and you know make my life much much easier as far as uh, filling in a lot of these colors. And part of the challenge is not getting my big head into the shot and, um, you know, getting up at the top of the page and filling in at the top of the page as well. So I'm filling in her eyes now and I decided to do like a red color for her eyes. Sometimes you see anime characters with red eyes, so I thought I'd, I'd do that here. And again, I'm, I'm using pink, red, and a maroon color to do the effect and then I'm blending it together. And I'm just using the markers to blend it together. I'm not using the, uh, the blender that comes with the Copic sets. Because frankly, I don't know what I did with it. So I have no idea where it's at. 
So now I'm filling her in, I'm, you know, filling in her fur. I like the way she came out. She came out really sweet. And you have to be careful not to smear the uh, color in her mouth, the maroon, or her eyes. You know, typically what I would do is try to get the uh, lighter color down first before putting in, you know, darker colors so that I don't smear. But for some reason, I didn't think of doing that. So getting her fur down and then I'm kind of going back over um, her fur just because it looked kind of streaky. And now I'm putting in some shadows with gray. And a little bit of a sheen in her, uh, in her mane. in there and then anything that looks kind of uneven I'll just go over again there's certain times where where streaks you know aren't gonna be a big deal and then certain areas where you really have to try to clean it up So just getting the head feathers of the bird here and his wing, his right wing. Right wing. Trying to not color the, the uh, text in the background. So surprisingly though, I've got several colors of like anywhere between a yellow and an orange. So I've got, you know, the uh, orange color below his beak, which is a little different than his beak. So fill in Kimba's ears here. And I'm really stretching to kind of get, you know, the, the ears, so without trying to get my head in the shot. I'm getting the trees all set up here and I'm using like a moss green. And the branches. And I'm just kind of winging it, winging it here, you know. I don't really know what I'm doing exactly, but you know, I'm trying to get some darker colors in the background just to make the characters pop, so. Add a, a couple of extra uh, trees in between the legs of the of the animals, just because uh, there's a lot of negative space back there. And then filling in a little more, filling in on the trees, looking good. Now I'm going over with uh, some dark gray and getting some shadows on the trees. Sorry for some of the background noise. Now I'm just uh, I'm putting in some leaves in the background and I'm just using the uh, shape 
of the brush of the Copic marker just to, to fill in. Just kind of being lazy about it and, and trying to get those uh, kind of leaf or, or teardrop shapes like to look like leaves. So, And then trying to vary the size as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to get it much darker at the top of the page and then you know you'll see a little light coming through the trees at the bottom. So just kind of filling in the gaps here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just winging it. You know, if I had studied like, you know, scenery or something, painting scenery or something, I would probably have really been overthinking this because, you know, I would, I would be thinking of all the rules and whatnot, but because I have no idea what I'm doing, it's, it's much, a, a much faster process, actually. You know, I've taken several drawing classes, life drawing. Um, when I was studying graphic design, I took uh, drawing for graphic design, uh, stuff like that. But, um, you know, I, I never really did like landscape portraits or, or anything like that. I mean, you know, I did a few in, um, in graphic design where I did large uh, landscapes, but those were mostly um, pencil drawings, so. So just kind of trying to not paint over the, the uh, text in the background and trying to fill that in. So here I'm really stretching my arm to get the top of that page because, you know, I, I can't hover over the illustration or else you're going to get my head in the way. And you don't want to see my head. I don't even want to see my head. So. <laughs> So adding some leaves here on the branches and, and kind of trying to make it look natural like the leaves are actually connected to the trees. Whereas before I was just kind of putting them in the background. almost done here so this is like the non exciting part where you're just filling in the background you know my favorite part is is eyes like I love doing eyes so so putting some texture on the trees and making them look like kind of real trees here you know as much as I can got some light hitting the trees and you can kind of see them going up into the background yeah I think you know like what I was saying earlier just putting some of that dark um, making some dark areas in the upper background really makes the characters pop just doing some branches in the background or some vines little bit of blue so you can see some some sky kind of peeking through at the bottom some light coming through and you know that's about it you know I hope you guys liked it I was actually kind of happy the way it came out so let me know what you guys think and don't forget to subscribe so hit that subscribe button and the notification button thanks so much see ya